Hi everyone, Dolly here with Crafty Mermaid Mom. I hope you guys are having a great day. Today I have a project share for you, which I'm really excited about. But before I start, I need to ask Alicia with Stowbaker, as well as Clarissa with Karamia's Corner, to please exit this video. I know this is a tutorial, but what I have created for them will be shown in this video, so I really want them to be surprised. So anyway, I think we can go ahead and get started. So what I will be doing the tutorial on today are altered teacups. So let me show you what I have done so far and then we'll go ahead and get into the tutorial. Okay, so the very first teacup that I made was for Clarissa and she and I were going to be doing a swap that included an altered pin cushion box. Well, I tried to do a Mod Podge box with a pin cushion and it just didn't turn out for me. So I put it down and I just did not want to start all over. So I went back on YouTube and I saw some really beautiful teacups and I thought that would be perfect. That's what I'm going to make for her is an altered teacup. Well, you guys, I had so much fun with these that I decided that that's what I would do for my other friend, Alicia. But let me go ahead and show you this one. This one is for Clarissa, and we decided on a shabby chic theme. So what I did is I took some old cups that I actually found in my mom's garage. Let me show you guys. So I was in my mom's garage one day, and this was a while back, and I found these old teacups. And I mean, they're not anything, they're not of good quality. They're made in China. So anyway, I grabbed them from my mom's garage and I decided these were the ones I was gonna use. So let me show you what I mean. So if you guys have any old teacups that you find laying around, these, you can tell, are just not good quality and they're pretty for looks, but I would not even use them to drink from. So I decided that I would use them for my alt altered teacup pin cushions or altered pin cushion teacups. And so I've already made two. You can see I've used two, so I actually can make about four more if I needed to. But um, these came in handy, first of all, because they were free. And secondly, I wouldn't feel bad because they're not made out of fine bone china or anything like that. So I don't feel bad ruining them or you know not using them for teacups. I looked in YouTube and I did find several tutorials, but I decided to go a little bit more simpler. Um, I love the Shabby Chic, but I'm more simple and I don't really like to go overboard with my things. Now, that's your own preference. If you guys decide that you want to make your teacup a little bit more extravagant, add more lace, add more flowers, add more of the pearls. It's up to you how you want to design it, but let me tell you, they are so much fun. So um, what I've done on this is very simple. I have used the printed floral fabric and some flowers from the wedding section. And then I've used beads, the little strands of the pearls, and also some lace around the teacup as well as around the bottom of the cup and then added a little ribbon. And then of course my pins, which I will link the tutorial for my stick pins below. I just did that so you guys can learn how to make the pins as well. So this is the cup and let me show you the one that I decided to do for Alicia. So for Alicia, she is my mermaid loving, ocean loving friend. And she and I have a lot in common as far as what we love and that is the ocean theme the um the coastal themes and the mermaid themes so what i made for her was this one this one is a mermaid theme ocean theme pin cushion so what i did is a while back i found this really beautiful fabric let me take the pins out of this and this fabric was kind of like a vintage fabric and i fell in love with it because it has a mermaid on it can you guys see the mermaid and it also says somewhere beyond the sea. And I just thought that was so beautiful. I loved this fabric. So this is the fabric that I decided to go with when I made her teacup. Here are the shells that I've put down that are kind of sprayed in a gold spray. 
with some cute little blue and yellow shells that also have some really pretty glitter spray on them. I don't know what this is, but it's got a glitter coating. And then I've added my own flat back pearls to kind of give it more of a beachy look. And so I just put a few of those on the side. I didn't want to overcrowd it with shells. At first, I thought that I might want to put shells along the sides of the cup. And I changed my mind because, like I said, I like it simple. I don't really like the over extravagant, you know, designs only because this is going to be a pin cushion. And I didn't want to deal with dust and all of that stuff because a lot of times when you've got all of that stuff on it, it's really hard to dust. So I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So this is the teacup for Alicia. And let me show you the stick pins that I made for Alicia, which I thought were so cute. The first stick pin that I made for her has this cute little tiny starfish in gold. The next one has a cute little shell and it's kind of a clear shell. And then I also made one with a cute little dolphin. And this is just a plain white one. I just wanted to make sure there were enough stick pins in here. And I also made a, a really tiny little one, which is kind of hard to handle, but it's a little fish. It goes with the theme. So that is my altered pin cushion for Alicia. So I made one more, and this one is not really completely done. I have not yet um, adhered or glued this to the plate. So this one is still separated from the plate. Let me show you. Um, so I just need to glue it. The reason why I didn't glue it is because I was running short of time and I was thinking I might have to package this up and I didn't want it to break. Um, these I will have to package up as well, but I'm gonna be careful in how I wrap these up. So anyway, this one is actually a printed cup and again this is not fine bone china this is something that i bought at home goods so it was it was fairly affordable um and so what i've done to this is i've also added lace to the bottom and i've also added the pearls a strand of pearls and you guys these were loose pearls and all i did was thread them together so i get an even distribution and i wrapped them around and tied them around the bottom and then I've added the organza roses and then a little organza ribbon to the side here. And then some stick pins. And let me show you these stick pins. They are so beautiful. These two stick pins were gifted to me by my friend Ursula. She made these for me a while back and I just fell in love with them and I knew that I would use them in a project eventually and I here I am using them. I wish I didn't have to give these away. I got to enjoy them for quite a while, so I'm okay with it. All right, so also, I wanted to show you this really pretty ribbon that I used around the edge of this. As you can see, since this is a printed cup, I wanted to use a plain colored fabric on top. So I took a piece of white fabric that did actually have prints. The prints were just not colored. So this one has the floral prints, but you can barely see it. It kind of blends in and it looked, I think it looked really nice with this cup. So once I glue it on, this is how it's going to look like. So these are my teacups. And so I'm going to get started with showing you guys. I'm trying to poke them through the, you know, this is part of my OCD. I'm trying to poke them through where the old holes were. I know, crazy, but I'm OCD like that. All right, so um, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna tell you guys what you need to make one of these altered teacups. I'm gonna go ahead and move these aside. All right, so what you're first gonna need is an old teacup, and this is not an old teacup. I actually ordered this online a while back, and it's not an expensive teacup. It's not fine bone china. It's just um, by Coastline Imports, and they were very affordable. I think it came in a set of four, 
but um, the reason I had ordered this is because I would throw tea parties around the spring and summer with a group of my friends. We would all throw them and take turns and I wanted to have enough teacups so that everybody had a nice set. So rather than putting out my really good china or my fine bone china teacups, um, I could use these and not have to worry if they broke or somebody accidentally dropped them. I wouldn't worry too much. So um, this is the one I'm going to use today. So find a teacup and you guys, you could actually go to um, your thrift stores and check around there because I have found old teacups in thrift stores. My friends and I used to always frequent the thrift shops when we would be having our um, tea parties because we didn't want to have to spend too much on the teacups and saucers but then we spent so much time hunting down teacups at different thrift stores that i found it was easier for me to order some online so that's what i ended up doing on um, various occasions all right so you're going to need an old teacup and you're also going to need um some scissors and you're going to need some fabric and you're going to need some lace of your choice, of course. And you're also going to need the choice of your um, trim or your pearls or whatever it is that you decide to use. And in this case, I like to use the string of mini beaded pearls. You're also going to need some thread and a needle, sewing needle. You're gonna need your glue gun, which I'm not gonna leave out here because I don't want it to damage or burn the paper. You will need a stocking. So I just went to um, Daiso and I bought this pack. It's a three pack of stockings and I think it was $1.50, but I don't wear stockings so I had to buy them. But you can get stockings anywhere, they still sell them. And then you're gonna need some polyfill. So, you know, just like what they use to um, make the little stuffed animals or um, I guess pillows sometimes. But yeah, you're gonna need a decent amount of polyfiber or I don't know what it's called, polyfill. Anyway, so also um, you're gonna need, like I said, you're gonna need your lace. So I have my lace and trim here that I'm gonna be using. And okay. So what I've decided on this one, I know I have my um, fabric here. I was going to make one using one of the plain beige teacups that I had shown you earlier. And I was gonna choose from one of these fabrics, but because I decided to use this teacup and this one is printed, I'm going to use plain fabric. So here's the fabric that I will be using. And I'm gonna go ahead and put these aside since I'm not using these. And I've decided to use a plain fabric because I feel like it would be too loud to use print on print. And so for the sake of saving time, what I've done is I've pre-cut my pieces. So here's what you're gonna wanna do. So I'm gonna put these aside now that you guys know what you need. I'm gonna put all of this aside. So what you're gonna do is you are going to take your fabric and you're going to cut two pieces and this is optional you definitely need the larger piece but for the smaller piece it's up to you if you want to make the smaller piece and i'll explain that in a minute but first go ahead and cut your round circle piece and what i've seen on youtube is that people measure their saucer and then what they do is they trace their saucer and cut that out. But I found that the saucer is a little too small. It didn't give me enough give on the fabric. So I decided that I wanted to make my fabric just a little bit larger than the saucer. So that is why mine is larger than the saucer. Okay, so what you're going to need first is you're going to need your needle and your thread. So you can use any color thread that you want to use. I just chose to use pink, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew all the way around this circle and you're just gonna stitch a regular stitch. So um, what you might wanna do is you might wanna go ahead and tie a knot at the end so that it doesn't uh, pull through. 
Okay, so we're just going to take this and we're just going to stitch in and out just like this. Can you guys see what I'm doing here? And it's really easy. Um, just takes a little time. If you have a sewing machine, you could also use your sewing machine. Just do the loose stitch and you should be fine. Okay, so now you have what looks like a little tiny mini bonnet. You want to go ahead and don't cut all the string off because you're going to want to pull that string to close it up. So this is going to be what's going to hold all of that polyfill. And so it's going to go right like that, right in there. All right, so go ahead and take your polyfill and don't make it too tight, but don't make it too loose. So what I like to do is I like to blend the polyfill together to kind of make sure it's evenly distributed and then squish it together. Okay. And so what you're going to need to do is you're going to take your stocking, have it right here, and I'm going to put this polyfill inside the stocking. And I could put it all the way through like this, but I've noticed that when I do this, see these little stitch lines, they show on top. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put it halfway through, just like that. And I'm going to hold this portion right here as tight as I can because I want to make sure everything is balled up as tight as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a knot just like this from one end using one end and the other end again i'm trying to make it as tight as possible because i want this and don't worry about this part showing remember this is all going to be covered up underneath so i'm going to go ahead and tie this end just like this and i'm going to tie a knot and try to make it tight but not too tight. Now I can kind of mold it. Now that it's all in there, I can kind of try and distribute the fill evenly and see how it fits in there. And I think this is fine. I think this will be fine. And you can kind of mold it in there. See how that looks? So that's that. And again, don't worry, this is gonna be hidden underneath. No one's gonna see. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ball that I've just created and I'm going to put my little bonnet over it. A little tiny bonnet that I just created. And I'm going to make sure this comes out of the hole. And I'm going to pull the two strings, my two ends together, to tighten it up and to close it up. So... I'm going to go ahead and take one last pull at it and be careful because if your thread is thin, you might break it. So try not to pull too hard. Okay, so once you tied a knot, you can go ahead and cut the excess string off. But now what you want to do is you want to make sure that these creases that you have here, they're evenly distributed. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of evening it off so that I don't have like too many creases in one area. So I'm going to make sure to distribute that those creases evenly around it. See what I'm doing here? Because I don't want it to be bunched up all in one area. I'm 
Okay, so if I stick it in here, this is what it's going to look like. And you could kind of just play around with it. See how this crease is really noticeable? So I'm going to go over here and move this crease aside a little bit so that it's not so noticeable. I see another crease here that looks real noticeable. So keep doing that until you get a little bit more of an even look to it where your creases aren't so obvious, I guess. Okay, so I think that looks fine right there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our hot glue gun and we are going to glue this down, okay? So let me go ahead and take my hot glue gun and I'm going to, all I'm going to do is move this aside because I don't like the glue to come to the top once I lay it back down. So I'm going to try to get the glue to the very center line right here instead of up on top where you could see it. So I'm going to take my fingers and just move it. And I can, you can do it little by little. Don't feel like you have to do like a whole circle around there because your glue will dry up too quickly. Sometimes you're going to get excess glue, but you could always peel that off once it dries. I always run out of my glue. Right in the middle of doing something like this, I always run out. Okay. Okay, I think we pretty much got glue all the way around and you can fix that up later. Like right now, there might be some areas of this like on the top that I need to clean up because I've got excess glue on it, but you can always do that later on. So there you have it. You've got the cushion part done. And um, what you wanna do is to kind of give it a cleaner look on top. You want to go ahead and add some lace. This is your choice, of course. If you like it like this, it's fine. You can leave it like this. But I like to add the trim around it or the lace around it because it gives it a little bit more of a prettier, shabby chic look. So, so that's what I'll do is I'll just glue this on top around the sides so that it um, gives it that finished look but I think what I'm gonna do first is just make sure I didn't miss any spots okay all right so let me go ahead and glue this around what you can do is before you cut it go ahead and measure it around the lip of the cup to see how much you need I did a little excess on this one just because I didn't want to um, run out of lace or be short Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start going this way. So I put the um, hot glue right on the lip, as you can see. And I'm gonna do this little by little because I don't want, I wanna be able to move it around. Sometimes if you do it all at once, you really don't have the chance to move it all around. You gotta glue it down so quickly. Okay.
You guys, there's a moth in my room that's driving me crazy. And just be patient with your hot glue. Sometimes it drives me crazy because it dries so quickly and I want to be able to move my um, whatever I'm working with around and sometimes I don't always get the chance because before you know it this glue is dried up so quickly okay I'm almost there it's so funny because I think I built a callus on my thumb that sometimes I don't even feel the heat anymore <laughs> so bad all right, so I think I can go ahead and determine where this is going to end. I'm going to overlap it just a little bit, just so you can't see where it ends. I have a little bit of glue on here. Okay, so I can close this now. Ow. Okay, I felt that. <laughs> Okay, all right, so that's done. I just wanna make sure that that is on there tightly. I want the seams, the end to be glued down really tight. And then what I like to do is, cause I don't like this to be open, I like to put a little bit of glue there just so that these two pieces stay closed. Okay, all right, so it's not looking bad. Look at how cute that is. And that's the reason why I said I use plain uh, fabric because I feel like things get too loud for me easily. Like, I think I'm just a real plain Jane where when something gets too loud, it really bothers me. Okay, let's move on. So now, as you can see, this is printed and this is printed. Well. I want to add a design to the bottom of this and what I want to do is I want to add another piece of lace down here and see how if I put it around kind of the base of the cup it looks really pretty like this but you can't really see it that much so what I like to do is I want to put a piece of pink down here so that it shows a lot more you see if I put this right over it and then I have the cup it kind of shows it's kind of highlighted it stands out a little bit more can you guys see let me see okay this is what I mean well it may not really show up on camera but there's a difference if I just lay it down like this it kind of blends with the beige that's on the plate but if I add the pink piece of fabric and then do the lace overlay then you could cut it stands out a little bit more to me at least it does so that's how i like to see it i like to see it like that so that's what i'm going to do so before i lay this down i'm going to glue this around the base of my cup okay so let me start again i'm going to start right here And I'm going to go all the way around like I did on the lip on the top. See how easy this is, you guys? I never thought that this would be so easy. When I was watching the tutorials, I kind of thought, oh, I don't have time to do that. It's going to take me a while. It, I did it so quickly. It was um, once you start doing it it's so fun and it's so easy look how pretty that is around the edge I love it okay so I'm almost done I can close it off Okay, 
So I just have to cut off the excess piece of lace. And you'd re you really don't have to if you like it to overlap, that's fine, but it kind of bothers me. So I'm going to cut this piece off right here. And then I'm going to glue this shut. Let me see if it falls right though. Okay. So I know you guys really can't see this. It's kind of covered, but I'm going to show you from the bottom what it looks like. Okay. All right. Now that it's done, this is what it looks like on the bottom. It's a little wrinkled, but when it's flat, it's going to look like this. It's going to lay flat on the plate. So it's going to lay like this. Can you guys see that? So what I would like to do is I like to put the pink underneath so that you could kind of see it once it's against the beige plate. See what I mean? Okay. All right. So now what I do is instead of gluing this down to the plate first, I like to glue it down to my lace because then I know it's completely centered. So um, what I do is I want it to stick really well. So I take the base of the, or the very bottom of the cup and I put glue around the rim and then I stick this to it. And I'm gonna cut this just a little because I feel like the circle is a little bit too large and I don't want the edges showing so let me just cut the circle a little bit so that it's not it's not too big that the edges show okay all right so i think that it doesn't have to be a perfect circle either mine's not okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to glue it down just like that and see how i can see through the fabric where the center is that's why I like to glue it this way rather than putting the teacup on top. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my glue to the very bottom of the teacup that usually touches the plate. And I know this is a messy gluing job, but for the sake of the video, I'm not taking my time. Okay, so I want to center it and that's about centered as you can see. So I'm gonna pull to make sure that it's even on there. And then, so when I lay it down, you see how it stands out? It stands out and it doesn't blend into my um, beige plate. See that? That's the reason why I put a piece of cloth underneath. It looks a lot prettier, at least to me it does. All right. Okay, so we're almost done. See how easy this was, you guys? So easy. All right, so now what we're gonna do is, because this looks like this, I wanna add a little bit of pearls to it, okay? So I want this to have a little something more than just the lace. I wanna add a piece of pearl. So I'm gonna take a piece of pearl string of pearls, these little tiny beads, and I'm gonna wrap this all the way around, okay? I'm gonna glue this. So as you can see, this project really requires your glue gun. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here. And I'm gonna just glue the string of beads all the way around the bottom. And it's easy to follow because the top part of this lace has that edge that you can just follow along on and that's where you can lay or put your hot glue. Makes it really easy. You're gonna do that all the way around, okay? Now you guys don't have to follow this design. Obviously, 
You could do whatever you want. This is just an example of how I choose to do mine. If you guys want to use, you know, instead of pearls, you want to use colored beads, go for it. You guys can get very creative with this. And do whatever you want. I would love to see, if you guys end up doing an altered teacup, I would love to see it. I love looking at all of the YouTube tutorials just because I like looking at the pictures of how beautiful a lot of the teacups came out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right here. And then this is gonna go right here. Oh wow, you guys, look, that's perfect. Like I did not really expect, I thought I was gonna have excess on this and I didn't. Okay. The glue is a little bit hot and I'm trying to move it around and it's not working for me here. All right. So I have a lot of excess glue that I'm gonna have to peel off later, but that's fine. Right now, I just wanna make sure it's glued down. I'm trying to make it so that the pearls are on there straight, but you can't always get an exact straight line on this, depending on how the fabric is, because sometimes the fabric pushes it up. Okay, all right. So I think that's okay. That turned out all right. See how that looks? It's pretty, it makes it look more feminine all the way around. All right, so all you have to do now is glue that down to the plate. You can add all of your pins and you're basically done. That's all you need to do. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my other cups out. So here are your altered pin cushion teacups. I hope you guys have fun with this and I would love to see what you create. Thanks so much for watching you guys. I hope this tutorial was helpful and I hope you have a wonderful week. Thanks for watching. Bye everyone.